Hello, hi. I want to take a few minutes to talk about measures of center. And I want to do this by discussing an example. All right, so my example is Candy Crush. It has to do with Candy Crush. You want to know what Candy Crush is? It's a really fun game. If you don't know what it is, you're welcome because I just wasted a many hours of your life by introducing you to it. Okay, so go check it out. Anyway, even if you've never played Candy Crush, what's important is at the end of a level, they give you your leaderboard ranking. Okay, so how you compared everyone else who's played that level. Alright, so uh, I've played hundreds of levels of Candy Crush probably more than I should admit to. Um, collecting all of my leaderboard rankings while possible would take a long time. Uh, so instead of doing that, I went ahead and I got a random sample of five leaderboard rankings. Okay, so my Candy Crush rankings were, um, so let me write this down, leaderboard leaderboard rankings were 50, 42, 5th, 28, and 12. Okay, that's only five observations. So you might look at that and say, oh, well, I pretty much see how she does on Candy Crush, right? But what if I gave you a sample that was much larger? It becomes harder and harder for you to say, oh, I just looked at that sample and I understand how you perform on Candy Crush, or I understand something about that sample. It's really hard when your sample size gets big. We as humans are not good at looking at large amounts of data and then saying something meaningful about that data unless we calculate some statistics about that data. Okay, so what should we calculate about this data to describe how I perform in Candy Crush. Well, one, one thing that you might consider is maybe I should calculate the mean, okay, or the sample mean. So maybe I should calculate the sample mean, right? This is a sample, so I would then be calculating a sample mean, okay? So our notation for sample mean was x bar, and it equals the sum, okay, there's that little sum, sim, sum symbol, and then we write from i equals 1 to n of xi. Right, what's, x, what's xi? Well, at each of these data points are x1 through 5, right? So this is x1, this is x1, this is x2, this is x3, this is x4, and this is x5. So this xi is one of these, all right? One of the ith observation, okay? Um, so the, this sum divided by n. Right? That's what sample mean is, the sum divided by n. We probably already know this, but this might be new notation for us. It's really important that we understand this notation in addition to understanding how to calculate it, because later we're going to be using this notation uh, and it'll be slightly more difficult um, if you don't grasp it here. Okay? So, for this particular sample, n is 5, so really what we're doing is the sum from i equals 1 to 5 of xi divided by 5, okay? So x bar then, the sum from i equals 1 to 5, so we go x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5. That's what that sum means, divided by 5, okay? So 50 plus 42 plus 5 plus 28 plus 12 divided by 5, this sum adds up to 137 divided by 5, which is 27.4, okay? So on average, on average, my leaderboard ranking is the 27th point four, all right? Um, so on average, I score somewhere around uh, 27.4. That's the way you would interpret that, right? Now this is the sample mean, x bar. If I had given you the data for all 100 or several hundred levels that I've played Candy Crush, then we might be calculating a population mean instead of a sample mean. I just want to briefly mention this and how we would do it. Instead of it being x bar, it'd be mu, 
Okay, so we'd have this Greek letter mu. Now we use Greek letters usually for population parameters and our alphabet uh, letters, our uh, standard alphabet letters for sample um, statistics. Okay, so this is population mean. All right, and population mean, the way we calculate it, exactly the same, except we go, the sum goes from i equals 1 to capital N, instead of lowercase n, uh, of each, each um, data point, and then it's divided by capital N instead of, instead of being divided by lowercase n. Now, I can't actually calculate this because I only gave you sample data. I didn't give you the data for um, every ranking that I've ever had in Candy Crush, which, we would, which is what the population would be. All right, so there we go. That's sample mean. That's one measure of center, and it's a pretty darn good one. Why is it so good? Well, it uses all the data, right? Um, you know, but you know, it, has, it has some limitations, though, too. Uh, one of the biggest limitations we have with the sample mean is, uh, you know, it can be highly skewed by an outlier. Now, in this data, uh, w whether or not there's any outlier, uh, well, it's only five data points, so it's hard to say. But in a larger data set, say you had all of your leaderboard rankings were between um, 1 and maybe 1 and 50. All your leaderboard rankings were there, and then you just had one leaderboard ranking that was like 200 something, right? Well, that 200 and something would really screw up your mean, okay? Because when you did the sum, the sum would be much larger and your mean would be skewed up really high, right? So uh, to get away from that, that problem, we have another measure of center called the median, okay? So let's talk about how to do the medians. Let me go ahead and erase what I have here. So median. Alright, now our notation for median is instead of x bar, we use x tilde, okay? And there's, uh, there's no real formula for finding the median. Um, it, you don't really need to use a formula to find the median. Rather, uh, you know, the median is just the middle value. So you just need to figure out what the middle value is. Uh, does anyone remember from like uh, maybe pre-algebra or algebra how to find a midpoint? Remember, midpoints are the um, first observation plus the last observation divided by two, right? Which is basically a mean between two, two uh, numbers, right? So a really helpful formula for median, you don't have to use this, but a really helpful formula for median is a, is a formula for the, the rank of the median. Okay, and this one would be the, so the first observation, which is one. The rank of the first observation is one, right? What's the rank of the last observation? Well, it's five observations, so whatever the sample size is, and then divide that by two. Whatever this comes out to be, this will be the rank of the median. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how to use that. Okay, um, let's see. First thing in finding the median, you should sort your data. Right, we're trying to find the middle observation, so the data is going to have to be sorted. So let's see. I have the fifth number um, being uh, leaderboard number five, that's the lowest one. Then we have 12. I like to put little checks as I go to make sure that I include all my data points. Uh, then we got 28, and we got 42, and we got 50. All right, now if I'm going to use this equation, then it would be the rank of the median would be 1 plus 5 divided by 2, because there's five observations here. So that's 6 divided by 2, which is 3, right? So the third observation would be my median, right? So 1, 2, 3, this is the third observation. That's my median, okay? So x tilde is 28. 28, all right? So actually, you know, you didn't have to use this formula, right? It's just a helpful formula if you wanted to use it. Um, another thing that you could have done is you could have looked at this data and you could have, let me put this down, you would go one, two, oh, there's the middle number, right? So you go out inwards to find the middle number, okay? It doesn't matter uh, which way you want to do it. When you have larger data sets, 
uh, this formula can be really helpful. Now, I want to I want to propose that we have a, another observation because if you have an odd number of observations in your sample, finding the median is kind of easy, right? If you have an even number of observations in your sample, there's one more thing that you need to do. Okay? So let's pretend like we have a six observation here and say I was ranked it's made up. I'll rank myself number 1. Okay, so there you go, number one, six observation. So let me go ahead and resort my data. I have one, five, 12, 28, 42, and 50. Okay, let me erase this. So now what's x tilde? What is the median? All right, so if I were to use this, this uh, formula here, Instead of, instead of 1 plus 5, now it would be 1 plus 6, because we have 6 observations. So it would be 7 divided by 2. What's 7 divided by 2? 3.5. So it's the 3.5 observation that's going to be the median. Well, where's the 3.5 observation? Well, it's between the third and the fourth, right? So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, right here between these two observations, that's where you'll find your median, okay? So 12 plus 28 divided by 2, okay? So that would be 40 divided by 2, which is 20, All right? So your median would then be halfway between the third and fourth. Now, if you use the technique where you go like this, when you, if you do this, then you'll end up canceling these last two ones out last, and so that's where the middle of the data is. All right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that observation. Delete all this. All right, so now we've talked about the median and the mean and the sample mean. One more measure of center. So let's remind us, what, what was our mean? Our mean X bar was 27.4. Last measure of the center that we are going to cover in this class is the mode, all right? What is mode? It's the uh, data observation that occurs the most often, okay? So you think mode, you think most often. Any of these occur more than once? No. Right? Since no observation is occurring most often, then there is no mode to this data. All right? Um, now, there probably is a mode in the population, meaning I probably have gotten a ranking more than once uh, in the population, but for this particular sample, it just didn't show up. So, you know, mode is it's limited by, uh, well, your, your sample size. It's really limited by that. It's really, it's not a common uh, measure of sensor because of its limitations, uh, including the fact that if you have sample size issues like we have here. Also, if you have data that's measured on a really continuous scale, it can be hard to observe an observation, exactly the same observation more than once. Um, because of this, uh, mode is actually really good and actually one of the best measures of center for categorical data. Okay? Uh, in categorical data, such as asking a little kid, a bunch of little kids, what's your favorite color? You get all these answers, green, blue, purple. That's categorical data. And you can't calculate a mean with that. Uh, those aren't numbers, so you can't add them up. Um, but you can, ca and even, even a median, you have a hard time calculating a median with those numbers, okay? But mode is easy. So uh, mode is most often used for categorical type data.